of this great association yes my question is as a regard to what the report of the lb has given here from the clerk regarding the suspension of the sport so my notice on that day faithful day i cannot remember the day but around 9 p.m we received a shocking news that the sports minister has been suspended and less than 12 hours we saw the advisory board being dissolved and as i am concerned i and the former edusa leader i understand clearly that the advisory board is the last resort for the for the aggrieved person that is if you have a problem you go to the advisory board to seek for resolve but if you suspend me at uh, nine o'clock and you dissolve where i should go for support by eight o'clock in the morning i don't see a fair play happening in that juncture and again to rationalize or to give more prominence to what i am saying you look at the 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 the, 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 the presentation that was done by the secretary general there is no indication of the suspension of this fourth minister and it is a, it, should, it should be captured when i was suspended by the 22nd executive council is there in our congress it is there in our quarterly report it is there if you deny me you can go and check so there was no merit in you suspending the second the sport minister if it is not indicated in your archives i see i see it as a witch hunt and i see it as something that lack merit and it has no basis because your council through your secretary general has failed to indicate it in the secretariat report there is no basis that can be getting from edusa and edusa cannot hold him or his people in the future accountable for that and again uh, in reference to my beginning of my question where we should have sought for resort that is where we should have sought for justice that a uh, body was uh, dismissed i don't deny the dismissal but the timeliness of the dismissal and the timeliness of the suspension does not make sense to me again uh in terms of the suspension of the of the sport minister what was given section 59 has given the power for your uh, executive council to form what we call a code of conduct but that code of conduct also in the, it indicates so yes we should all we, everybody will abide by the code of conduct that is given because it's backed by section 59 but according to those code of conduct it's only by theft fraud or what we call corruption where a decision can be immediately taken apart from that any other decision that should come there should start with a warning and other matters then you take a decision but for the suspension of the sport minister we have seen that a, a night where his fly was seen in the air the same night he was suspended so there was no engagement i want you to clarify where there has been contingency plans or rules of engagement thank you okay. regarding the sport minister okay your basis is that he was suspended the lc was dissolved and then the suspension was not genuine because you said that he was not advised, he was not warned. Okay, thank you. I'll answer your questions. Uh, first of all, with regards to the suspension, it is genuine as it is backed by the Constitution, Section 59, that gives the Executive Council to form a Code of Conduct, which is binding on all ministers. And that same Code of Conduct have indicated that if someone, someone has happened to do an offense, the person can be warned. With issues relating to politics, as an executive member, a general warning was reaching to all executive members that we desist from it. Wait, listen, when you are speaking, why don't you wait, let me answer. Wait, let me come. If you want me to answer, just wait. Are you, do, you want me to, do you want me to answer you or you don't want me to answer you? No, Sadia, Sadia, wait. Sadia, wait. Sadia, wait. Um, Tonics, listen here, listen here. Listen, please. Listen, I want to know one from you. Um, listen, please. Honorable Mike, if you ask me a question, Honorable Mike, please order delegates, delegates, listen. This is a formal gathering. Don't speak without you giving the chance to speak. No, please. Don't worry. Let me, let me help you. Let me help you. Don't worry. Um, Secretary General, listen, delegates, first of all, be reminded of the standing orders. If you speak, when you are not given the chance, you will not speak in the delegate because I will not give you the chance. 
You have to follow the standing order. You will not ask a question because I will not give you the chance. I am chairing. This is a formal gathering. This is a formal gathering. When the when the senator was raising a question, he raised his statements. He defended his motion and then brought a question in it. If I am answering, what I expect from him is to listen until when I'm done. If you don't hear an answer, you said you are not you don't hear an answer. That is the simple thing. This is a congress and this is a formal gathering. What I'm telling is that a general warning was written to all council members. When the issue happens, the same minister was told the action was not good. He said he is not aware of it, which is not justifiable. We all know politics when you are in a 10 man committee, you are part and parcel of the decision making, especially a vice chair. That's the, that's the fact. Now, away from that, you said you are not aware. The same standing order said you can be warned by either writing or verbal. They told you this is supposed not to happen, but ask them to withdraw this. Let them withdraw it. We are a serving council, our integrity matters. We all come through politics. We are all in council three voting. But in the same constitution, through that section 15, that give us the power to form or to formulate those code of conduct, then allow to accept that. He said he cannot do anything about it. If you cannot do anything about it, and you are part of that same group that is responsible of the actions, then we have the powers that are the same standing, I mean, code of conduct to suspend the individual. And that's what we did. This is what we did. And when we are writing, we quote it there. But then in whatsoever you are doing, this day will come. You have been sending messages that we defended. But we are waiting because you will be here. This is what we did in regards to the suspension. No, I'm asking. I'm asking a question. No, I'm asking. You don't answer my question, Mr. President. If I put your flyer on a, your name on a flyer, should be suspended. We are here, we are demonstrating certain actions as delegates of the parliament is wrong. And we know there is a standing order that is dictating each and every one of us, our actions and our inactions in this gathering here. Whatever we demonstrate here is the same thing we are going to demonstrate outside when situations are hectic on us. If you have a question, you are given the chance to answer the, ask the question. If I give you my answer, or if you give your answer, doesn't mean we have to satisfy you because you are subjective as a human being. What you believe is difficult to change in you, especially when it is already a premeditated belief. Please, let's respect those orders and have this. We cannot come up to the tail end and we mix up the sugar and the pepper. Okay, let me hear from you. by the EC of education. If, sorry, if there is, then why? Because when Renaissance, pro, this thing, victory celebration was coming, Mr. President posted it on his status. The SG posted it, and the IPRO posted it. But we haven't seen any suspension. So if there is no political party recognized by the EC, how can one be, if affiliated with a political camp, be a court, a, a court of this conduct? 
First of all, let me help you. Sajo, Sajo. Honorable, please, um, from the executive table here, I don't expect you people to turn it off. We are the one who have been held accountable. We are not holding anyone accountable, please. Okay, honorable, first of all, um, the EC don't recognize camp because by the constitution of Elusa, no camp is recognized. But then, for all of us, we are clearly saw that when we are coming during in political office, we pass through a group that we identify ourselves with. I can tell you for free, go look at my flyer, whether you have seen that anything that is related to talking of taking a position or putting someone in position or addressing a political case. The flyer was posted by me because I was voted by people and then I decided to post it to invite them to the victory celebration. Because I was, please still let me come. Please let me come. Please still let me come. I think you asked a question. I'm giving you an answer. If you are not, then I give you time you talk back. That's so. The basic thing is here. The camp is coming together to prepare for an election of other people to office. And it was sent in a platform that bears the name of Edusa. I have told the council members, whatever goes to your personal mobile phone, your statuses, we have, we cannot hold you anything about it. All of them can do it because they have been doing it. Either the SU election to the local levels. But what goes into the platforms, the message was that nobody should be involved into political talks in the platforms or sending political messages in the platforms. And any platform that bears Edusa, any platform that bears Edusa, you are either an official page or you are a page that is using, bearing our name, which we have a control in certain aspects. The constitution is very clear on that. I don't want to hear from the executive council members. The executive council members, you have nothing to offer here. Are you getting it? That is the case. If you have another thing, can I hear? It should have not been raised then earlier on. Thank you so much. Yes, um, my question will be based on the provision that talks about the dissolution of the advisory board two weeks before Congress, uh, because the president made it state that uh, within the LC did not amend if that is necessary amendment. So my question will go back to the, the clerk whether that particular section require amendment or it is the understanding of the executive council that is very, very uh, insufficient with that very particular provision. Because it state Congress in accordance with the constitution. So I want the deputies, uh, the clerk to emphasize more on that. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mali. Yeah. Under section 24, subsection 2, paragraph A of the Constitution of Edusa states that the advisory board shall be nominated by the executive council at the extraordinary congress. That is said in section 24, subsection 2, paragraph A. So the Constitution went further to say. The advisory board in under section 50, subsection 1, the advisory board shall be set up at Congress. You see the point? So this particular Congress in this section is referring to the extraordinary Congress. You see the point? The same section, subsection 1, paragraph G, says that the advisory board should be dissolved two weeks before Congress for the nomination of new members at Congress. What I want to make clear to every edition here is that the Constitution, as I stated earlier on, mentioned the extraordinary Congress by name at one point, 
and at other instances, just refer to it as Congress. So this Congress is mentioned under section 50, so section 1, and section 50, section 1, paragraph D, are simply referring to the extraordinary Congress. The language is clear, it does not need any amendment, except if you want to pay deaf ears or blind, blind ourselves you know, uh, to pretend not to see it. Why I referred the reconstitution of the advisory board to the Congress? Because this is the supreme decision making body. Whatever is decided here, it is by conditional binding upon us. Do you understand? To implement it forthwith. Go to section 27. It is clearly stated there. I will answer your question. Um, I'm saying what you just said that. The reduction of emotion or be a member of the executive council can introduce bills or motion to the executive council, except bills of motion that seek to engage an executive council members in an amendment of anything, in an amendment of any provision of the constitution. You cannot introduce a bill to seek amendment of any provision of the constitution. We don't make the constitution. We cannot be blamed for anything about the constitution. Our responsibility is to enforce the constitution which we are doing. We are told that we should dissolve the advisory board two weeks before Congress. We don't have any other Congress, Congress if, this, if not this general Congress. This, on the flyer we advertise, we say final Congress, not extraordinary Congress. Now for the one person we put to this man here, amendment of the constitution, section 47, it says the Legislative Council shall be the only competent body to amend or repeal the provision of this constitution in accordance with this constitution. Two, it says the amendment document shall be submitted to Congress for appeal. Congress approval shall be two thirds. Amendment involves the removal, removal, modification, or simplification of the words, clauses, phrases in the sections. And that provision regarding the advisory board is a clause in a section and a clause in the constitution. They can amend it. And ask us council members, we call in an extraordinary congress. We will call because it requires no query. Any member that comes, we vote and have it. We have a constitution. It's simple as that. Yes. Can you now we get a question for you? I'll get the other one. Yes. Now I think we are going now. We now Yes, let me get this question. We have to move to the next level, please. Okay, my question is in reference of the SG's report mm -hmm. under the Education and Research Ministry. Yes. Um, it states that uh, there was an MOU signed between EDUSA and NCAC, that is National Center for Arts and Culture, yes. whereby interns were sent in every semester. But to my knowledge, I have learned of only one whereby it was uh, declared. The, the internship was announced and it was put on the pages. But for the second cohort, I was never aware. To my knowledge, I did, I'm not aware of, of it. My question is, how was the selection done to the Education Research Minister? I am a teacher and I believe in audibility. I have been speaking in forums and forums and I have spoken to a lot of people. And of course, I, I don't always prefer using the, even if you can recall congresses, I don't always stand at the podium when I face people because I believe in the audibility of my voice. So you don't need to worry about that fine TV. There is no time, I said, I repeat, there is not a single time that the IPR don't create the form and it circulates. Attested this year. And there is no single time that all the applicants have been vetted and then forwarded to the council. The SG can attest to that. So you missing to see it or thinking any other thing, I believe there is no merit in, 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 in the claims you have made, perhaps. The second one was was So you answer. You tell me that it was said. It was done. It was done. 
the best way. No, let me let me tell you. Let me I have let, let me let me let me make this very clear. Exactly. It's a question yes, huh? that is asked. So you answer that question. Simple. No, 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 no. You cannot call. Let me um the requirement for the internships has their binding rules. And of course, it doesn't even only come from us, but from the place that interns are expected to work. And that your CGP counts, your year of study counts, and of course, your major and minor counts. I repeat, the CGP counts, the year of study counts, and your major and minor counts. If you apply, even if you have 5.00 as a CGPA, your major can deny you because it is the National Center for Transport and they give priority to history majors okay. and English minors first. Then, if we cannot get this, it is to revise English major, history minor. Everything was transparently done and to the point. Thank you. Thank you. No people or no one should speak, no two people should speak at the same time. So please we make sure we go by the order. So we will again go on. If anyone has any question, you can raise your hand up and then you'll be given the chance to speak. Honorable delegates. Yes, honorable. You can tell us your name and your level of studies, then you raise your question. The clerk of the um, legislative body um, raised an issue which is very important to me, that the advisory board has been selected in accordance with the law, but like the resolution of the body is not in accordance with the law, means there are both sides of it here. And uh, when you came in as the president of the association, you said you don't have the power to reinstate them. Yes. Does that mean the question you put to the audience here, and some of them raised their hand that uh, they should be reinstated, that has given the power for whosoever is responsible to reinstate those people to do it or not? Okay, good. Thank you so much. The powers I am given as the president is that the advisory board should be nominated at the extraordinary congress and it should be dissolved two weeks before the congress which i have done those were the powers given to me and i have done that two weeks before congress i have dissolved the advisory board reconstituting them is calling another is another congress and then it is going to be like very crazy kind of like because the simple thing is that i am giving powers to do something i've done and i'm now questioning my own powers what i'm saying is that when these things we are not okay the same That is the simple thing here. Now, the advice, the best thing is that the next council committee, in as much as the council is marked for, for review, let the LC form a CRC, they review it and look at all these things, 
and not struggle with Congress will be called the other thing, and we have what we want. Or it is have what they want because Biden will not be here. Thank you. Order number seven says during the nomination of the members of the Electoral Commission, an individual can only nominate one person. Understand that we are to nominate five election official commissioners. It is their discretion to make sure that they look for other people to help them during the process. And I, you have the right to nominate. I am the one who appoints the chair of the EC through the consultation of my council. And then the chair that is appointed will also nominate or appoint a vice chair through the, I mean, discussion or agreement with his other five commission members, other four commission members. So, he says, during the nomination of members of the Electoral Commission, an individual can only nominate one person. A, nom a nomination is only substantiated when it is seconded by another person. If I nominate the VC substantiate by seconding the motion, then that person will be consented. If he accepts, then delegates will approve it as a, kind of, I mean, a commissioner in the election. When the five are done, then I'll take up the rest to work on appointing the chair president of the EC. So please, let's understand that that's how it goes. And then I'll want to, if you have tried this, good. Um, if you are settled, if you are settled, let me know. Okay, uh, let's wait for the SD to take, help us in taking the details. One that you want to nominate, you can put your hand up. Okay, I will start from that end. And then Keda? Yes. Afternoon? Yes. Who is Rakim? Um, okay, who is going to second? Rakim Bay, can we see you? Okay, good. Who is, we have anyone who is going to second the motion? Anyone to second the motion? Yes? He seconded. Rakim Bay, hands down, sorry, please. Hands down. Rakim Bai, do you consent to the nomination to the EC? Thank you so much. SD, you can get that. Hands up. Anyone who wants to nominate? Yes, Albar? Yes? Who is Modi Jiso? Okay, is there anyone who is going to second the motion? Yes? Modiji, so do you accept the nomination? As you take that. Yes. Yes, uh, former clerk of the uh, IPRO of DC. Former IPRO, yes. Please order. Please order. Please order. Yes. Amorike Mane. Who seconded the, who can second the motion? Yes. Our K Mane, do you consent to the nomination? Thank you. Yes, I'll take from the ladies behind. Yeah, your hand was up, Auntie. Who is seconding the motion? You seconded, Madam, you seconded the motion? Emmanuel, do you consent to that? Emmanuel, what? Mendy, how many people do you get? Huh? You are four? Yes, can I get you? Alaikum salam. Who is Mohamed Kebe? Is anyone who is seconded Mohamed Kebe? Yes? You seconded the most. Mohamed, do you consent to nomination? Mohamed? Kebe. How many do you have? Okay, um, delegates, honorable delegates, um, the, the, the Congress can only nominate five people, and we have gotten the five. Thank you so much. Can we have the five of you here? The five of you, can you come here? Can we have the five of you here?
Honorable delegates present here. Face the camera. Face the camera, yes. Okay. Um, honorable delegates present here. Honorable delegates, please order. Honorable delegates, please order. Powers is vested on you to nominate the EC. And they are here. They were seconded. They are consented to nomination. These are people that we are giving the trust to run the next election cycle. And I believe you have that commitment and believe that they can execute those functions in, without fear and favor with due diligence and transparency. Because that is honor. And you live with that for the rest of your life. So from here on, um, I... Um, we will ask for anyone to raise the motion to accept their nomination. And then if you have someone who seconded it, then it becomes approved by you, the delegates in this August Congress. Is there anyone who... Yes, you accepted the nomination. Who is going to second the motion? Yes, Aisha. You seconded. You seconded. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Take their telephone numbers. Their telephone numbers. Yes. Um, honorable delegates, from now on, the only, the only job I have with these people, hello, the only job I have with these people is to appoint a chair among them. And then they will take it up from there and do the rest in consultation with the last EC as they will be handed over some files to help them. And then the SUEC will help them too, by the grace of God. Um, on that note, I am coming to the conclusion. Honorable delegates present here this afternoon. On behalf of the 14 Executive Council, order please. And my own behalf, and on behalf of the Vice President, I thank you all for honoring this, and then I wish you good luck. Thank you so much.